Now in the previous video we've been talking about systems in physical geography and I just wanted to remind you that we've been talking about systems all the way through this module. Right back at the beginning I said here we have the Earth's surface and we have energy inputs going into that surface from solar energy and from geothermal energy and we have gravitational energy. That interaction between energy and materials is driving processes. Those processes can lead to entrainment of sediment, transport of sediment and deposition of sediment. And what I'm doing in that is kind of simplifying the reality and identifying components, solar energy, geothermal energy, the Earth's surface. I'm then identifying linkages between them and it might be linkages in terms of energy inputs or transfer, there's a transfer of energy from the interior of the Earth to the surface. So that's an input here into the Earth's surface environment. We could be thinking equally of mass. Another example that I've mentioned previously uh, is the idea of uh, glaciers growing up on the Earth's surface and that's based on a mass balance of snow being input as accumulation and meltwater or icebergs being lost as ablation accumulation up here. So you've got accumulation and ablation and through flow through the glacier. If the amount of accumulation is about equal to the amount of ablation then we have an equilibrium or balance system and the system is going to remain largely unchanged. Well things are changing because we've got inputs and we've got outputs for ablation and inputs for accumulation but despite that movement, despite the fact it's a dynamic system, things are moving, the overall system is unchanging so we call that a, an equilibrium system. But if we suddenly increase the amount of accumulation without changing the amount of ablation, well then we're adding more than we're taking away, so that would no longer be an equilibrium situation and you would expect expansion of the glacier. If we increase the ablation and decrease the accumulation, then you'd expect um, shrinking of the glacier. So we've talked about systems in, in previous situations, so maybe just go back and look at your notes and think about things we've talked about previously and try to identify the individual components of these different systems. We're going to talk about ecosystems, we're going to talk about biogeochemical cycles over the next few, few sessions, so you'll have lots of opportunities to think about this. But just try to identify individual components, the connections between those components, and so on. So one example that I, I use with the second year, so you might encounter this again in, in more detail next year, is the edge of the glacier, an ice marginal land system. When we talk about land, landscapes, using that terminology sometimes we call it a land system because there are inputs, there are outputs, there are throughputs and so on. So for the ice margin, and here is the glacier on its substrate, approaching a margin and I've drawn a uh, a nice glacial moraine in there to give you a, a, a specific location for the for the margin, and then here we have the uh, the pro glacial environment going out to the sea. And I'm just going to think about that area with the edge of the glacier, the moraine, the, the ice margin as a system in, in, in its own right. Now you might think of this as being an open system because we have inputs to the system from up glacier, and we have outputs from the system going uh, down glacier or down system, uh, um, downstream away from the glacier. And you can think of energy or in this case particularly we can think of materials. And materials are being entrained into the glacier, transported through the glacier and then they're being deposited from the edge of the glacier into the moraine here. So we can think of this as being a store with inputs. We also have erosion from that store, wind, rain, etc washing material or carrying material or melt water coming through through the moraine from the glacier carrying material in rivers out from this uh, out from this ice marginal land system so we have inputs and we have outputs and just like we were talking about with the mass balance of the glacier earlier the size of this moraine is going to depend on the inputs and the outputs so whether this is an equilibrium system with the moraine staying the same size or if it's going to be growing or if it's going to be shrinking that depends on the, the rate of input and the rate of output so we have a flux through this store and the store can grow or shrink so that's just another example of how we can reduce uh, a complex physical environment into a number of basically boxes and arrows and think about the connections between components by thinking about inputs, outputs, throughputs, fluxes, uh, equilibrium uh, and so on.